So I know that the uh, focus that we want to talk a lot about is how do we make sure that uh, the Democratic Party and labor are working more closely together and more effectively uh, come election time, but also uh, between elections when we're actually advocating for public policy that helps work with people and that uh, helps make the community better. So I know that we want to talk a lot about that. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the, uh, the labor movement and what we're trying to accomplish here in San Diego, and then make sure that we can get into this discussion about how, how we work, work together. So and, as Gretchen talked about, you know, a lot of people have um, sort of uh, uh, misconceptions or just uh, have uh, uh, not a lot of uh, understanding of what unions actually are, what the labor movement is. Um, but it's something really basic. And if you think about where we are today, 2015, and the state of our economy, uh, the, the, the point that I always try to get people focused on is uh, the Center on Policy Initiatives last year uh, did a, um, uh, an assessment of where we are in our local economy. They do this every couple of years. And the key point that they're looking at is uh, how many uh, uh, families in our region, in San Diego, can actually afford to pay their bills one to one, can actually afford to get by. So if you think about sort of the definition of, of poverty, there's, you know, there's the federal poverty rate and it's uh, based on uh, uh, sort of a, a number of standards that I think are a little bit outdated and are not very relevant to a, a place like Southern California. But if you think about just this basic concept that if you're, if you're working every day, if you're working full time, uh, if both uh, parents are working in a two-parent uh, uh, household, but you can't actually afford to pay your bills month to month, that's a definition of poverty. That means you're not getting by. You're not actually uh, able to make it down. You're certainly not able to create a better future for your family. And today in San Diego, almost four in ten, four in ten of our families uh, live below that basic standard of self-sufficiency do not make enough to make ends meet month to month. So that's a crisis that we have in our community. If you think about the next generation that's coming out behind us, currently in, in, in the district that Mike and I serve, San Diego Unified, two-thirds of our students live in poverty. So when people you know, think about where we are as a community, we're a community that's defined by severe economic hardship, severe economic struggle, by a near majority of working adults currently, and by an overwhelming majority of young people who are coming out. So at the, at the, at the Labor Council, we really focus on three big picture goals. Uh, the first is we believe that we should have an economy where people working full time should at least be able to support their families, should at least be able to make ends meet. And so we need to figure out how to lift up wages and lift up working conditions for people who are working now. And unfortunately, you know, like we talked about, uh, we have far too many families that live well below that basic self-sufficiency self standard. Second is we want to drive an economy that's creating good jobs, good middle-class careers, uh, for workers going forward in the future. And that's either uh, uh, created by a strong public education system or, and or it's created by strong uh, apprenticeship programs, strong pipelines that bring uh, people into middle class careers where they can afford to support their families and create a better future for their kids. And unfortunately today, the only sector of our local economy that really has a defined career pathway uh, that does not involve uh, people going and graduating from college and getting graduate degrees is in the construction trades. And uh, Gretchen's uh, union, IBW 569, is probably the, uh, the clearest example of what's possible if we invest in a real career pipeline for young people. If you're an 18-year-old uh, today, going to graduate from Point Loma High School or San Diego High School or Lincoln High School, you can go straight into an IBEW, for instance, apprenticeship program. 
You can be making a living wage right off the bat. You're not incurring debt as you're getting your training going to school. In fact, the training's paid for. And you go through the program, and in five years, you graduate uh, with, with a union card that allows you to work anywhere in the world, including here in San Diego, and you are making $75,000, $80,000 a year with health care benefits and pension. You have a middle class career. So we want to create more pathways to the middle class like exists with the uh, construction apprenticeship programs. And third, as a union movement, we think it's critical that we rebuild the strength of our public education system. Our pre-K, K-12, community college, Cal State, University of California, we know that past generations uh, created the finest public education system anywhere in the world, in California. And we know, unfortunately, since Proposition 13, we've seen uh, generations squander that investment that our parents and grandparents made in a strong public education system. Uh, we've, we've slipped to now, by most accounts, either we're number 49 or 50th in the country in per pupil spending. Uh, and instead, what we've done over the course of a generation is we've uh, replaced the priority of investing in young people's future through a strong public education system. And we've created the most expensive incarceration system anywhere in the world. And that's something that all of us uh, need to take responsibility for because that's something our generation is responsible for and we've got to turn that around. So our big picture goals as a labor movement are to lift up wages for current workers, so that workers working full time can actually make ends meet. Create new careers uh, that create clear pipelines into the middle class uh, for everybody, whether or not they go on to, in, in, on to college or, or straight into a career coming out of high school. And we need to create, rebuild a great public education system uh, here in San Diego and in California. So that's what we're trying to do. But if you think about the challenges that we're facing here in 2015, in some ways, they're not dissimilar to the challenges that working families were facing a century ago in this country. Uh, a century ago, uh, we had a massive shift in the economy, a transition from uh, an agricultural economy primarily to an industrial economy, people moving uh, not only from all over the country, but all over the world into cities. Um, but people were, were exploited in that economy. Uh, children were working, people were working in seven days a week with no break. Uh, people were working without any notion of uh, basic uh, health benefits, decent living conditions, certainly without a notion of any sort of retirement security. And the way that workers responded a century ago was to say, we're not going to simply put up with conditions like this. We're going to do something about it. And workers came together. And often at great risk, they pushed back at their employers, people at the very top, a small group of people at the very top who controlled all of the economic and all of the political power in the country. And working people came together and said, we've got to fight for a better future. This isn't going to work for us now, and it's certainly not going to work for our kids. And at great risk to themselves, uh, workers went out on strike, whether it was in the textile mills in Massachusetts, or in the auto factories in, the, in, in, in Michigan, uh, or beginning in the, in the fields in California. And workers started to win victories. Now, there was no um, regulated system for workers to form unions. That didn't come until, uh, until well into the Depression. But workers said, we simply can't allow an economy to continue to progress in the way it's progressing, where we're concentrating wealth and power with so many people, and we're, with so few people, and where so many of us can't afford to make ends meet. And so we're going to come together, and we're going to fight. And workers did that. And by doing so, workers built the labor movement, but they also built the middle class in this country. And they created a sense uh, of what this country is always supposed to have been, which is uh, no matter the circumstances uh, in, in, in which you're born, no matter the circumstances uh, in which you enter this country, that if you work hard, you should have an opportunity for a decent future. All of us in this room today owe it to those workers a century ago and the decades that followed for 
coming together and fighting for middle class and fighting for the opportunities that, that we have uh, uh, been able to, uh, to take advantage of. And that led to, by the mid-1960s, about a third of all workers in the country belonged to unions. It was the highest point of union density uh, any time in the history of our country. It also, there were two other things about that point in time. It was also the time of the longest, most sustained, and strongest period of economic growth in the history of our country. So as workers came together and formed strong unions, the entire country did that. Well. And we saw that reflected in the fact that workers throughout different strata of the economic uh, system, whether you were in the top 20% or in the bottom 20%, Workers were roughly growing at about the same level. So all of us were growing the economy together and all of us were benefiting from that economic growth uh, and because such a high percentage of workers in the country belong to unions. And there was a second thing that happened during that time period, particularly in California. That's when a generation of Californians decided that they were going to invest in the, in the greatest public education system that anybody had ever seen. That generation of Californians, defined by a high percentage of working families that belong to unions, decided we're going to invest in our future and we're going to grow a great public education system so that we not only have a strong economy now, but we're going to have a strong economy into the future. And unfortunately, from that point in time, we've gone backwards. We've gone backwards as an economy, we've gone backwards as a Society. So today, in the private sector, roughly 6% of all workers belong to a labor union. Overall, the number is about 11% when you include public sector workers. So we went from about a third of all workers in the mid-60s belonging to unions to now, at best, 11% in the private sector, about 6%. In the mid-1960s, the largest private sector employer in the country was General Motors, unionized. Who's the largest private sector employer today? Walmart. Uh, desperately, violently anti-union. So as we've seen that decline in union density, it's no surprise that we've seen a couple of other things. We haven't seen the economy necessarily slow down. The economy has continued to grow since the mid-1960s. But whereas at, in the mid-1960s, we were all growing together, people at the bottom 20% and the top 20% growing at the same rate, today, almost all economic growth has come to people, not just at the 1%, but the top 10.1 of 1% of the economy are seeing all of the growth uh, you know, go to them. And with that growth, of course, not only concentrates economic power, but concentrates political power. So we see people like the Koch brothers with the ability to influence politics in a way that we haven't seen in a long time from, uh, from key individuals. The concentration of wealth and the concentration of political power going hand in hand right back to the people at the very top. And, and again, we look at the situation that we're in today, four out of 10, working families in San Diego can't pay their bills. Two thirds of our students live in poverty. So we've gone through a period where people came together, fought for strong unions over a sustained period of time, got to a point that our economy was growing, creating opportunity for everybody, investing in a great public education system going forward. And since that point in time, we've seen the decline in unionization leading to dramatic growth in inequality, dramatic concentration of power at the very, very top, and of course, a significant decline in investment in public education replaced by, invest replaced by spending on incarceration. The two things go hand in hand. Strong unions equal a strong middle class, equal a prosperous society and opportunity for everybody, and equal a politics that's about investing in us all and investing in the future. Weak unions leads to mass inequality, 
huge percentages of people not being able to make it ends meet day to day, a decline in our public, invest, uh, our public investment in education and infrastructure, and a politics that's based on, on greed and short-term uh, thinking. So when we think about the labor movement and the Democratic Party working together, we are one and the same. We're about fighting for a political future that benefits all of us. A, po a politics of environmental sustainability, a politics of creating opportunity for young people, a politics of inclusion, no matter what the circumstances you're born into, no matter where you come from anywhere in the world, you're supposed to be a part of what we're doing here in this country, what we're doing here in our community. You're supposed to have opportunity. That's what the Democratic Party is about. That's our core values as Democrats. And of course that's what we believe in and that's what we stand for and that's what we fight for every day is labor unions. So in San Diego, our labor council, it's actually the San Diego Imperial County's Labor Council, we're made up of about 134 uh, member unions. Uh, that encompasses about 190,000 total union members here in our two counties. Um, we tend to be small to mid-sized unions uh, in San Diego Imperial County. So uh, in Los Angeles, for instance, you'll have uh, some unions that are 100,000 members on their own, 150,000 members on their own, also in the Bay Area, also Chicago and New York. San Diego, our largest union, is our, actual, our United Domestic Workers, our Home Care Workers, about 20,000 members. Our uh, United Food and Commercial Workers, our grocery store and pharmacy workers, uh, about 14,000 workers. And then, uh, you know, the rest of, the, of our 134 unions tend to be 10,000 members, 7,000, down to 5,000, 3,000. We've got a lot of unions that are about 1,000 members or, or, or below. But what we've been able to do in San Diego is pull those unions together collectively to be able to have a lot of success in politics, to be able to help elect good, progressive, pro-working Democrats to office, uh, to get more people uh, participating in the process, and to actually make ourselves, over, over time, more of a, a, a competitive region when, it, when we think about sort of a, you know, elections between Democrats and Republicans. So our unions have come together collectively. Working people have put their money into political campaigns. Working people have certainly put their time knocking on doors, making phone calls, uh, talking to coworkers about the difference in, 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 the, in the races that we get involved in. But it's important to remember that the reason working people through their unions get involved in politics, it's not just so we can win elections. It's not just so we can have more Democrats than Republicans in certain uh, races. It's so the four out of 10 working families that can't pay their bills are able to pay their bills. It's so that when we think about regional economic development, we're not just thinking about what's in the interest of the big hotels and the big corporations. We're thinking about how do we create an economy that's about pathways to middle class opportunity for all of us. It's so that we can reinvest in a strong public education system that creates opportunities for all of us, including as union members for our kids. So we get involved in politics because we know politics is one means to an end of creating a more just society. We also believe in organizing. We believe in getting out in all of these workplaces uh, where workers are exploited every day and helping workers come together, stand up, form stronger unions, uh, and, and push back at the, at the power dynamic between workers and employers. We believe working closely with community organizations that are trying to make life better, particularly in our uh, lowest income neighborhoods, uh, community organizations that focus on affordable housing, community organizations that focus on providing pathways to citizenship for immigrants, uh, community organizations that are doing a whole host of things uh, on behalf of, of, of working people. As a labor movement, we believe in, in, in forming effective partnerships with community organizations that are trying to do the right thing, including, of course, environmental organizations that are trying to create a more sustainable future. And, and I thank Gretchen and IBEW 
IBW is, I believe, the first construction union, I mean, our local 569, anywhere in the country that's actually hired an environmental organizer. And IBW, if, if people have you know, driven out to the central recently and you see the solar farms, you know, just the miles and miles of investment in solar energy, that's coming from our IBW. So being part of the labor movement and part of the environmental movement we see is one and the same. Being part of the labor movement and, and part of the immigration, the, uh, the movement for comprehensive immigration reform is one and the same. Being part of the labor movement and advocating for strong public education is one and the same. Being part of the labor movement and standing up for the basic civil and human rights of all people in this country and around the world is one and the same. And it's got to be one and the same because we represent the whole gamut. Our 190,000 members range from, again, construction workers, nurses, teachers, people with graduate degrees, uh, to janitors and grocery store workers and housekeepers and our, uh, and our newest uh, uh, affiliate, our taxi workers, uh, that are fighting every day uh, for a stronger future. So we are committed to engaging in politics. We put resources into it in a serious way. We're disciplined about uh, engaging in politics when we do. We, we get involved in races uh, intending to win. But we get involved in races intending to win, so then we've got an opportunity to pursue public policy that levels the playing field and makes it more possible uh, for all workers to have uh, a better shot at making it, and especially public policy that creates opportunities uh, to push back on employers who are interfering with organizing uh, by, by the workers. So I went through a lot, but that's kind of what we're about as a, as a, as a labor movement. And, We'll have uh, Duraka talk about the party, and then hopefully we can get into some discussions about how we 